Hello year one, I hope you're well. Today's video is all about how to throw a medieval party. Now your weekly task this week was to create an invitation for a medieval party and your English has all been geared around how to write that invitation because next week you will be throwing your own medieval party if you want to. So I'm going to give you five tips on how to throw the best medieval party ever. Tip number one is to make sure you send out your invitations that you have written this week. So you can invite your family, you could invite your friends, you can have the people in your house. Now, obviously these people aren't actually going to be able to come to your house as we are all staying inside at the moment. However, you could have a FaceTime party, you could have a Zoom party, or you could have an online party and try to come up with different ways that people can see your party and still enjoy your music. Maybe you can make some food and the other person on the other end of the telephone can have the food and you can eat at the same time or you can listen to the same music but first of all you've got to make sure you invite them tip number two is to make sure you have got some food parties in medieval times always started with a banquet or a dinner party so they normally started off with some kind of vegetable soup which involves making sure you've boiled all of your vegetables so that they're nice and soft making sure you've got some vegetable stock cube in there and putting it all into a bowl. They then have lots of bread rolls that they could dip into it. Their main course would then be a roast of some kind. So a roast um, chicken, a roast beef, something like that with lots of potatoes and again, vegetables. And their pudding would be jam tarts. Now jam tarts are really, really easy to make. So if you want to have a go at baking some on your own, I've left a link in the description bar to the BBC Good Foods recipe. All you need is some puff pastry, some jam and a cupcake tray and they taste delicious. Tip number three is to get the right music. Now you can go onto YouTube and just type in medieval music and that will come up with lots of different options. It's mostly all instrumental, which means that there aren't really any um, words to it. However, you can have a play around and find out what you can see. If you want, you can even make your own music. So you can get some pans from your kitchen and do some drumming. You might want to see if you might have a keyboard at home or a guitar that you could use or something that you could strum. There's lots of different ways that you can make instruments and I will leave some of those in the description bar below as well. So you can either find some music online or you can create your own. Tip number four is to do some dancing. You cannot have some music without dancing. Medieval dancing is quite similar to ballroom dancing. However, you can do it in a big group of people or a small group. It's very, very simple. And I will leave a link for you to watch some down below. Um, it's lots of fun. Or if you don't really like the sound of that, you can just make up your own dance moves. Tip number five is to have fun. It's a party. You're gonna be doing some dancing, you're gonna have some food, you can make some music. It's supposed to be a lot of fun. There we go. There are Miss Carter's top five tips to throw your own medieval party or medieval banquet. If you do give it a go next week, as it will be your weekly task, let me know. Maybe you can send me some videos or some pictures. Maybe even you can invite me and Mrs. Surridge by sending us a video of it. That would be fabulous. I hope you have a lovely weekend. Speak soon.